I think innovation is uh, you know, fundamentally about finding new ways of doing things, so or new products, new services. Innovation is crucial to a startup or an entrepreneurial business. Innovation is what ultimately will differentiate a startup from, say, a small business. There's a lot of confusion. People say, oh, you know, I'm a startup, and actually, well, not really. You might be uh, a viable small business. You might be a professional services business. But if you're not innovating, uh, that means you're not really developing a competitive advantage, and you're not developing a way to scale the business. Having a competitive advantage is extremely important in this day of global competition. Uh, you're not competing with another business down the street, you're competing with a, a business on the other side of the planet. So thinking about your competitive advantage uh, is, and, uh, and understanding your competitive advantage is crucial. Uh, now there are sometimes boutique opportunities uh, that might be you know, of a regional nature, uh, where you can get by without having a global competitive advantage, but the big opportunities, uh, you know, you could say the Google scale opportunities or the Facebook scale opportunities are about establishing global competitive advantage. So Google has a, what we call the 70-20-10 rule. So 70% of our um, R&D is focused on essentially incremental improvements to our existing products. We have uh, and that's not to say there is an innovation happening, but it's, it's very focused innovation. We've got existing products like uh, Google Apps or Gmail or Chrome or Android. Uh, we have large installed bases, large numbers of users. It's important that we continue to innovate uh, on these products. And that innovation is necessarily constrained by the fact that we have an installed base. So it's necessarily somewhat incremental. And that's okay. We have to continue to come out with new versions of Android, new versions of Chrome. Um, Occasionally you'll see though completely new approaches in these products which leads to the 20% bucket. The 20% bucket is a joining innovation so it's still innovation which is related to our uh, established or core businesses so it's, it's, uh, but it's new ways of doing things that won't necessarily feature in the next release or even the next few releases but it will perhaps feature into a future release uh, a completely different way of doing things. So, and then finally there's the 10% bucket which is really blue sky or moonshot or 10x. Uh, and things like self-driving cars, uh, stratospheric uh, balloon networks, Project Loon, um, um, Google Glass, those types of things uh, fit into the 10% bucket. They're quite unrelated to everything else we're doing, uh, but they could ultimately spin off completely new businesses for Google in the future. So I think that's 70 2010 model is actually quite a good model and I think many organizations could apply something similar. The point is recognizing there's a large percentage of your innovation that necessarily has to support your existing businesses. If you let those existing businesses languish, you'll ultimately you know, lose customers, lose users and that's not a good thing for any business. But you also have to recognize it's not sufficient to be purely incremental, hence the, hence the 20% looking for uh, some big changes in, in future versions of those products and then of course the 10% is the, is the blue sky stuff. Sometimes thinking about something in a very, very bold, um, unprecedented manner forces you to look at things differently. I'll give you a specific example. If I was on a, uh, an automotive engineering team and my boss came to me and said, oh, we need to, we need to improve fuel efficiency by 10% and I'm a, I'm a smart automotive engineer and uh, I'd probably go tweak things uh, or get my team to tweak things and I'd figure out how to do that uh, just by you know, linear incremental improvements on existing technology. But if the vision was not 10% better but 10x better, yeah. I'd have to probably throw out everything we're doing and think about something radically different. And sometimes that big vision forces that 10x thinking and it forces, uh, forces you to pursue something you weren't even contemplating earlier. So, it's both a rallying cry, but it also forces, uh, it can be a forcing function for doing things very differently. Uh, and really in, in doing so, um, making much more profound changes than, than would have been possible otherwise. There are some things where, you know, you can never have enough. And I think innovation and creativity are in the category of, you know, these are, these are qualities that you can never really have enough of in, even in, in an organization if you're to be successful.